Ubiquiti recently released a version of this, the power amp, minus the amp. So naturally, I grabbed an amplifier speaker with which to test it. This is the new PoE audio port, a newly announced little sibling to the power amp. It's smaller than the Mac Mini and significantly smaller than the existing power amp, it's big brother. The main difference between the audio port and the power amp is that the audio port is designed for an environment where you don't require a preamp, either because you already have one or because you have a speaker that doesn't require it. To give you a little background, generally there are two types of speakers, passive, and active. Passive speakers take the exact signal that they are given and make the sound. The problem with that is a lot of devices that you use to stream your music or create that signal from, such as the audio port or a turntable or something along those lines, puts out a very weak signal. The signal that they put out at a low weak level is called a line level. In order to really crank this sound up to 11, you need a preamp which takes that signal and brings the level up high enough so that you can output clear and loud sound. Oftentimes the preamp is also a source switcher, volume knob, or even in this case, a streamer. In the case of the power amp, this is included as both a preamp, a streamer, volume control, etc. That way you can take your passive speaker, plug it directly into the power amp, and crank it all the way up without any issues whatsoever. However, in the case of something like this 1100 watt powered speaker, the preamp is not required. All I have to do is take the streamer, plug it directly in, and I'm good to go. It is technically called a PA speaker, which interestingly enough does not stand for preamp. However, it stands for public address speaker because it is used in a way such as at a concert or in a school, etc., where you would address the public. Not only does this have the preamp and amplifier built in, it also has on the back here a couple of inputs as well as volume switchers, and the more advanced ones will have things such as Bluetooth connection and so on. So with an active speaker such as this, we can easily take our audio port, plug in our cables, connect up to our phone on the Wi-Fi, or in this case, wired in PoE, which gives obviously power and network to the unit, as we all of course know, and then you're good to go. You don't have to worry about an amp anywhere because that's already in the speaker. Now let's give that a minute to boot up and then we'll jump into the interface. If you have seen the um, power amp interface before, it's basically the same. In fact, you can even put the audio port and the power amp together in the same zone. Apologies for the interruption in the video, but at least I'm doing it in a picturesque location. Hopefully this is a nice, serene, relaxing moment for you. But I have to talk about MoveBot. I have here with me Colin from MoveBot, who's the sponsor of this channel, longtime friend of the channel, and who without, I would not be able to do most of the videos, or if, if not any of the videos. So thank you very much for your support. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Jesse. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Why don't you tell us a bit about MoveBot? Sure. So MoveBot is basically a next-gen data migration platform. Uh, if you want to move data into Google Workspace or between Google Workspaces, you're know, tenant to tenant, we have a fully scalable product. You don't have to worry about um, setting up any infrastructure. We can connect over 30 different platforms. Um, really easy to use. And uh, you know, it's, it should be for, so, Google to Google migrations or migrations into Google really point, point, click, and go. And honestly, as simple as that. And it is super simple. Fantastic, thank you very thanks, much. Thanks, Jesse, thank you. One thing I forgot to mention is in the box, you do have the option of your regular power brick. This is not the USB-C input. This is your regular barrel adapter input. On the back of the device, I didn't go through this either. I apologize. You have a USB-C audio in, which is interesting. You have optical out and optical in. You have eARC. HDMI TV, so if you have your sound going through your TV, you're able to utilize that. You have the barrel, the barrel adapter uh, that I just mentioned, as well as your PoE in Ethernet, and then you have your left and right audio out and left and right audio in. All right, new device found, PoE audio port. Let's hit set up. Next, it is setting it up. Set up succeeded. That was quick. And it uh, looks like it has an update, so I'm going to run this update real quick so that I have the most up-to-date software on here to show you because I did already start playing with this a week or two ago when it arrived, so I want to make sure that uh, this is the latest and greatest. All right, here we go. In the app, just like normally, you've got streaming, eARC, line in, SPDIF, and USB-C. Uh, line out, you can do, uh, line, well, audio output, you can do line out, SPDIF, and USB-C, you have your equalizer like normal, sound balance, left, right, channels, etc., and then manual firmware update, locate, restart, and remove. Under volume, you can uh, have your device volume and volume limits. 
and let's jump back to the main screen and that's where you can see that it's not playing anything. If you go over to the zones tab, that's where you can create the zones. And again, you can put both of these into the same zone, which I'll try and demonstrate. Although my power amp for some reason is not showing up on that network. Let me get a wired cable and fix that. Perfect, now we've got the power amp and the PoE audio port both uh, showing up in the app. Let's create a zone with both of them real quick just so that you can see. Let's just call this, um, turn it up, exclamation mark. And uh, we can have it be zone only, which is that you can only play to the zone and not the individual devices, or you can have it show up so that you can play music to either the zone or choose the individual devices that you want to um, play music to. So I'm gonna create that. Now turn it up, has two in there and two devices in there, and it's not playing anything. I love the animation that they do on this uh, volume slider here. That is really, really well done. Good job, Ubiquity. So I have, uh, if you look over in the settings, I've got my Spotify account. Um, um, already connected to this. Oh, one other thing that I should tell you is that there is the announcement capability, which I hadn't really seen before. Um, if you hit the microphone on here, you can send an announcement over both of these sources. So I will say, dinner time, come and get it. Dinner time, come and get it. Perfect, so you heard on both of those, the dinner announcement was made, and the way that you do that is, as you saw, you just press and hold to record uh, by hitting the little icon, little microphone icon there, and you're able to send that out. So now let's go over to the uh, music side of things. I'm going to jump over into Spotify. So in Spotify here, you'll see that the zone is turn it up. I will tap that. There we go. So you see here that you can control each of these individually. And if I go over here, I can pull up the screen to see what's playing and I can turn down the volume to the entire zone, such as that, or I can change the individual volume on the devices themselves. Now it is rather easy, I think, to be able to tell the difference between these two because this 1100 watt monster has a lot more bass in there just because of the fact that it's much bigger than these are. These are part of a whole surround sound setup and so there's, they're missing the subwoofer that would normally give that oomph that you're looking for, that butt kicking sound as they call it in the industry. Uh, you're not gonna get that with just two of these little speakers. You can obviously expand this further, but for the purpose of this video, I am only using these and yeah, this, speaker is gonna be amazing. This is, this is the kind of speaker you put outside, you crank it all the way up and you can hear it all the way across an entire park or you know fairground or concert stage. Obviously for a concert you would need a lot more of these and a lot more than 1100 watts, but 1100 watts is really freaking loud. All in all, I think this is a really, really great product. Um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of capability in here. And again, you can just turn the uh, volume up and down individually on these. I love that it has the zone capability and that you can mix and match these. That is perfect because depending on the room that you're playing it in or even in the in the same area, you may have two different types of speakers set up and you want to be able to uh, play across those even if you don't need the additional more expensive preamp included. The sound is incredible. A lot of that has to do with what speaker you're using. As I was explaining before, the difference between in the dip, as I was explaining before, the difference in size and whether or not you have subwoofers or bass included, etc. That's all going to depend on your individual setups. As streamers go, this is a really easy to use, great user interface, straightforward, awesome streamer on both accounts. There are a couple things that I would like them to add. Ubiquity, if you're listening, please. There was a feature on Sonos that I've had this request from multiple people: the ability to set either one of two things, an alarm to music that you choose. So if you've got a Spotify playlist, you want to set an alarm that every day at 8 a.m. it'll start playing this music and that's your get started, you know, pump up, start the day kind of music. Great. That's what I would love to have and I would love to be able to have it repeat for, you know, X amount of time and then automatically turn off at, you know, an hour or two hours later, whatever it is. Uh, alternatively, if you just have a way to schedule when that's going to go on, which is similar to alarms but a little bit different in its execution, there are alarms here, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but it does not um, 
uh, what do you call it? It does, it does allow you to select the device that you want it to ring on one at a time. And the sound is limited to just the chimes and jingles that they have here in the app and not my actual playlist. So I would love to have, see an execution on both fronts there on the alarm for me to be able to choose my own music as well as being able to schedule when music is going to play because I have some clients, for example, they like to have classical music playing in their homes, you know, big LA fancy type homes. They want to be able to have classical music playing in pretty much all the rooms around their house, especially the bathrooms. Why are my lights going off? Especially the bathrooms so that, you know, you don't hear when somebody is going to the bathroom. What is going on with my lights? This is weird. Anywho, that is a feature that I would want to have. Yes, of course, while I was doing some testing, I did take a video of blasting music, and these lights here are the type that do react to sound, and I think that's what, the, uh, what it just switched onto. So for funsies, let's switch to that, and then go back into the app, and hit play. I really hope I don't get a copyright strike for this video. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have questions and comments, please drop them down below. I do love reading them and uh, responding to as many as I can. Hopefully I can answer some questions for you and uh, these lights are not too annoying for you right now. Um, as always, thanks for watching.